uh, <laughs> it just popped up in uh, uh, trying to process some of the materials with a volunteer in the back. So it's discovered today, <laughs> Washington <laughs> University Special Collections and Archives. Um, we were processing a collection just today, and and one of these popped. So. Part of the terms that Grant extended were that the Confederate soldiers would not be taken into custody and sent to prisoner of war camps. They would be granted a parole. They would have to take the oath of allegiance to the United States, and then they would be given a slip of paper that would allow them to travel freely back to their homes. This was a big deal in letting these soldiers get back to their lives. They weren't taken off to prisoner's war camp. In other wars, very often, that's what happens. And Grant recognized that by the spring of 1865, the South was going to be in a very dire situation, almost regardless of how the war turned out. You know, the, the war's over, but it wasn't gonna be easy to reconstruct the economy of the South because Grant and Sherman had spent the previous two years trying to destroy as much of the economy of the South as they could. Portable presses were set up in the little village of Appomattox Courthouse and they created many thousands of these little slips of paper and the Confederate soldiers each got one and they signed it and then they made their way home. So it's in the afternoon of the 10th that George Sharp, the general put in charge of this process, would set up here at the tavern to begin printing these paroles. People are surprised when they find out that there are printers that are permanently affixed to the army. They're part of the army. Uh, the letterbox over here is Army of the Potomac. Uh, so when they issue these orders to tens of thousands of men, uh, they're, they're being effectively published. So when the army is here at Appomattox and there becomes the need to print parole passes, you know, people say, oh, well, you know, they had the printers, the paper, the ink with them to generate 30,000 blank parole passes. Yes, they did. So this, would, this was one of the original, I believe roughly 30,000 were printed. And this particular parole was actually pasted into a scrapbook. Um, there's a sign of that scrapbook on the reverse. It, it says, the bearer, Colonel J.E. Cook, Artillery Army, Northern Virginia, a paroled prisoner of the Army of Northern Virginia, has permission to go to his home and there remain undisturbed. Now, to the Union men who issued those passes, th that language was meant to remind Confederates of the obligations attendant upon their status as surrendered men. That is, your freedom is contingent on your good behavior, and we, the Union, have, have, have established the terms on which you um, uh, have been freed. Grant was a, a humanitarian soul at heart, so he could, he could justify this on grounds of this is, simple, this is simply what a person ought to do. But he also recognized that reconciling the defeated South to the Union as a whole was going to be no small task. And anything that could be done to facilitate that was going to be good from a policy standpoint. In Confederate eyes, Lee extracts some concessions and extracts a promise in the form of these parole passes that honorable Confederates will not be treated dishonorably by the Union, a promise that they will remain undisturbed. Becomes in post-war politics, in Confederate eyes, a promise that Tra traditional society will remain undisturbed. It was good to have a parole on you if you were a Confederate soldier wandering around the countryside because the war wasn't over yet. Appomattox did not mark the official end of the war. It marked the surrender of one Confederate army to one United States army. There were still many thousands of Confederate soldiers under arms elsewhere. So if you were a man in a Confederate uniform moving around the countryside, Yes, it was vital to have this parole if you were one of Lee's men who had surrendered at Appomattox. The parole passes uh, become cherished artifacts for Confederates of their service because they represent both, as Lee put it in his farewell address, the consciousness of duty faithfully performed, proof that you were there to the very bitter end, but also because they, well, it was hoped that they conferred some protection from any reprisals at the hands of the uh, victorious Union Army. Once you got this piece of paper, just go home. <laughs>